my name, I'm an Associate Director with WK Nolan, um, I'm the Development Manager on uh, One Woman in Lane. And just before I go in and um, talk through um, the three specific areas of women in relation to the tender stage, I just want to give a little bit of context to the project. Um, it's a fourth generation office block with an apartment block appended to it, 14 apartments. It's a retail unit of about 9,000 square feet. Um, I suppose it's a defining feature of what sets it apart as an office block is its exceptionally large reception area, foyer and lobby, which is just shy of 7,000 square feet. Um, it's a complicated building in its own right. It has an intelligent facade. There's a lot of interfaces with adjacent buildings, with streets, and with the, the various components that make up the overall whole. Um, so it wasn't without its own challenges. Um, when we became involved in the project first, the client had purchased it with um, planning permission, but they gave us a very clear brief to get on the site as soon as possible and make the building more efficient than it currently is. Um, and again, do that as quickly as you possibly can. Um, the three things I'm going to talk about in relation to the BIM up to tender stage are the BIM protocol, the uh, employer's information requirements, and the BIM execution plan. When we started the, the journey, uh, we did it in a traditional way, moving cores around uh, all on, on 2D with drawings, workshops, sketches. How can we make it more efficient? How can we uh, maximize the net internal area, etc.? Concurrent with that, we were having a debate with the client. Um, BIM is for you on this project, the message we were selling. Uh, there's a huge number of advantages associated with that, not just to deliver the building in BIM, because the building is part of an overall campus of four buildings uh, that extends to over 400,000 square feet. Two of these uh, are brand new builds, one of them will be a total refurb, um, so it's, it's a brilliant opportunity for you. But also because the client is a REIT and they intend to hold the building uh, long term, so they want to get much more out of the asset management facilities management angle than they would have out of the initial uh, using BIM on the actual build. We won that argument and we had to start the process then of incorporating the design team and contractors into um, BIM. So the first stage in that essentially was the BIM protocol. This is a standard uh, document by the, the Construction Industry Council. There's a second document, which is the, the Insurance uh, Federation's version of that, which everyone had to sign up to. An important thing to note, and, and all the appointments, the letters of appointment for the architects, the engineers, the MEP engineers, and everyone else, was that you can't pay lip service to this. You're, so you're, you're coming on board because you're telling us you have BIM experience and you have BIM capability. You're signing up to this. These documents will be appended, appendices to your letters of appointment. Um, so it's, it's all or nothing. Uh, and everyone went on that route. And the same was true for the, the contractor whenever they came on board. And this was a particular point that we uh, drilled and drilled during the interview process for the main contractors. Uh, and the main contractor, in this case, John Paul Construction, when they came on, they brought on board their expertise, but they bought into it 100%. There was no half-heartedness. It, it was, again, uh, full, uh, honest, involvement with it and BIM protocol uh, is part of it. their contract too and ultimately their subcontractors, the specialist subcontractors, the mechanical, the electrical, the lift facade, um, all went through the same rigours. Um, so we had total buy-in from the outset. The second uh, point is the requires information requirements uh, and how that was developed. Uh, we used the standard, the usual standards, I'm sure you're all familiar with, the BS 1192, which is related to the Common Data Environment, uh, PAS 1192, which is specific to BIM, uh, BS 8541, which is specific to componentry, etc. Um, classification system, UNICLASS, uh, so that everyone was calling, uh, speaking the same language, if you like, and uh, calling the same things the same things. Uh, the next two points, the asset information model requirements and the non-graphical data requirements. The client, in this case, um, while they were fully behind them, while they were fully on board with it, they didn't have an in-house uh, 
BIM expert themselves, and they didn't have, at that stage, an in-house facilities management expert or person. Um, so what we ended up doing, we, we used the, the, the NBS tool, I suppose, as our benchmark uh, for the rest of the information model requirements, and that breaks down components of the building, a boiler, an air handling unit, uh, part of the facade, into the, the sub-components, of which there might be 40, 50, 100, uh, and we ended up capturing every single one of those, whereas, and this is a learning point, if we were working more hands and glove with an expert from our client, well, perhaps we might have streamlined that process and got away with using less uh, learning point and something that would be easy to get time around. Data security requirements um, related to common data environment. Um, we started out with a system which frankly didn't work um, and we had to change it very quickly. Fortunately, we found out very quickly it didn't work. We ended up with Aidsight, um, which I think has been a tremendous success. It's, it's a common platform on the project at the moment and it works exceptionally well. Um, and the last thing was the handover procedure and post occupancy evaluations. Um, this, this relates to facilities management and it's, it's tied into the, the middle two points really, the asset information model requirements and the non graphical data. Uh, again, we didn't have a facilities management person on board from the client at that particular point. Um, and it's a learning point, something maybe we could have done better. We did probably more guesswork there than we comfortable with, but that's, that's just a, a learning point. Um, the last section is the, the BIM execution plan. As Ken referred to earlier, um, we didn't claim to be experts in BIM at the outset and we joined forces with ArcDocs who had expertise in this area and what they did was they produced a skeleton BIM execution plan which <coughs> circulated to the design team and went through an iterative process so we were all on a journey of learning essentially at that stage. Um, we came up with a final version that brought us up to the tender stage. Uh, and that was sent out to the tender stage. Uh, and it came back uh, from halls when they were selected, then undertook a detailed uh, series of inputs into it where we ultimately ended up with the finalized version. We coordinated things like realigning responsibilities, updating some of the responsibilities. Um, outlining model, modeling exclusions uh, that was particularly relevant in the facade, uh, but we had to make a common sense, take a common sense view of what exactly needed to be modeled and what exactly didn't need to be modeled. Um, and to be truthful, that has been very successful. That's the Bible that we're working to. Um, John Falls, as I said, bought into it 100%. Um, so from that journey, uh, what, what have we learned? It's by no means a totally fluid perfect process. Um, we started late, uh, we weren't experts, uh, I suppose neither was anyone else on the journey, uh, with the exception possibly of our dogs. Um, the EIR, first lesson, EIR could be more developed um, at the outset, particularly to focus on the handover and the safety side of it. As I said earlier, we were working with a client who was fully in, fully involved with this fully on board with this, but they didn't have the necessary in-house expertise um, to guide us on the FM side, the handover side, uh, and that ties into, I suppose, the second point, which is the common data environment. Our clients preferred uh, common data environment data on out of the SharePoint, whereas we were, we're using a site. So as we come up now to the handover stage, there's a conversion, if you like, that needs to be undertaken to convert what we have to SharePoint they're getting what they want. It's not a big deal, it's totally achievable, but it's just, it's another uh, kind of streamline that we could have undertaken earlier. Um, and then an emphasis for the drawings, this is something that caused great um, consternation at the outset. The, the apparently nonsensical um, way the drawings are, are labeled and numbered. Um, of course, when you understand it, it's like a car number plate. It's very, very easy. It's very simple to follow. Um, and maybe it's, it's a small point, but it's something we should have all focused on at the outset uh, to avoid the frustration, to avoid the, 
the consultant said, well, look, I hear what you're trying to do, but we just do it this way and that's how we do it. Um, we would have got everybody on board uh, sooner. <clears throat> uh, given the experienced design team, this is no reflection on anyone. I think this is something that will only improve uh, as more and more projects are undertaken in BIM and as, as time passes. Um, various consultants have various levels of experience um, and therefore you're probably not working from a level playing field, especially when you're in a situation where you're trying to cover a huge amount of ground very, very quickly. Um, the last point is, is I think it's what our docs refer to as pseudo -bin. Um, management of as built design changes, doing them in 2 the, the whole point here is um, doing the work twice. Uh, a huge amount of work to do. I'm going to do it the old-fashioned way because I'm quicker that way and uh, I know what I'm doing uh, and I worry about reversing it into the model later. You're really doing the work twice. It, it clears a hurdle for you now, it creates a bigger hurdle for you later on. Um, and again, as people become more and more experienced, that particular problem will be, be eliminated. Um, so overall, it's been a very, very worthwhile journey um, on the project, and um, I was surprised how quickly it settled down and smoothed out. Um, so that's been the tender stage. Thanks again.